Okay, we are going to work on solving rational equations. Some books may call this fractional equations. My variable is in the denominator. Okay, note, what could I variable not equal? Well, these denominators cannot equal zero. Therefore, 5x cannot equal zero, which means if I divide both sides by 5, x could not equal zero. The same would happen with this 2x. It could not equal zero, which means x could not be zero. So x cannot be zero in this problem because if it was, it would make the denominator zero. So I need to multiply everything by my least common denominator so I can get rid of these fractions. Well, my least common denominator, look at your numbers first. This is 5 times x, so I need a 5. I need an x, that's one of my factors. I need a 2. Now I'm not going to say x again, because I already have an x. So 5 times x times 2, my least common denominator will be a 10x. And I'm going to multiply everything by 10x. I'm going to multiply the left side by 10x, and I will also multiply the right side by 10x. So you see, we are going to need to use a distributive property. Each of these terms on the left side, there are two terms. They will both have to be multiplied by 10x. 10x times the first term, 10x times the second term. A lot of times I will skip that first step, and I will just multiply each term by 10x. Okay, we have some canceling we can do. The x's completely cancel out here, and 5 and 10 will cancel. 5 going to 5 one time, 5 will go into 10 two times. So in this first term, I have 2 times 3, which is 6. The second term, the x's will completely cancel out. The 2 and the 10 will also cancel. 2 will go into 2 one time, and 2 will go into 10 five times. 5 times 7 is 35. And on the right side, I will have 10x. Now, is this quadratic or is this linear? It looks like a very simple linear equation because I don't have any x squares, just x's. So 6 plus 35, that will be 41, equals 10x. Divide both sides by 10, x will equal 41 over 10. Now remember, we said x could not equal 0. Our x is not 0, so we are good. Let's try another one. Okay, I have 3 over x squared minus 3x plus 4 over x equals 1 over x minus 3. I need to make sure that I factor anything that needs to be factored. My first term, the denominator in my first term could be factored by the GCF. So let's begin factoring it. So I will have 3 over, and the GCF will be x. I will pull the x out, and that will leave me x minus 3 in that first term. Plus, I will have 4 over x still, and on the right side, 1 over x minus 3. So I need to find my least common denominator, because I don't want all these fractions. But first, what can my x not equal? What are my restricted values? Well, I do have an x as one of my factors, and I have an x minus 3. And I realize that these cannot equal 0. So x could not equal 0, x minus 3 could not equal 0, which in this case, that means x cannot equal 3. So x cannot equal 0, and x cannot equal 3. Okay, now I also need to decide what is my least common denominator, so I can multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator, so I can get rid of those fractions. With my least common denominator, I need x. I need an x minus 3. Now remember, this is not x. This is not 3. That is x minus 3. Now I'm not going to say x again. I've already used, I have an x to represent this x. I'm not going to say x minus 3 again. I already have an x minus 3. So my least common denominator is x times x minus 3. Just like in the previous problem, I like to put my least common denominator by each term. I'm just multiplying both sides by the least common denominator, but I like to place it by each term so I can cancel and not make any careless errors. In the first term, the x's are gone, 
and the x minus 3 is gone. It looks like I only have the 3 in the numerator. In my second term, x will cancel with this x, so I will just have 4 times the x minus 3. And I will use distributive property on that in a few minutes. On the right side, the x minus 3 will cancel with the other x minus 3. I will have 1 times x, which is just x. So I have 3 plus 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times negative 3 is a negative 12. Is this linear or is this quadratic? This is a linear equation. You notice I don't have any x squared. So I'm going to combine my like terms. The 3 and the negative 12, that's going to be negative 9. So on the left side, I will have 4x minus 9 will equal x. I am going to get rid of the 4x. I'm going to get it on the right because I have just the x over here. Look in front of the 4x is positive. So what do you do to both sides? You will subtract 4x from both sides. So I will have negative 9 is equal to 1x and a negative 4x is a negative 3x. Divide both sides by a negative 3 and x will equal 3. Uh-oh though. Remember, we said our x in our original problem could not be 0 or 3. So therefore, this answer actually has no solution. It is extraneous. Okay, let's do one more rational equation. But remember, what would make our equation extraneous? Well, b minus 6 cannot equal 0. By the way, is everything factored completely? Yes, it is. But b minus 6 cannot equal 0, which means b could not equal 6. 2, of course, 2 will never equal 0. And that does not have a variable with it. That is just 2. b minus 8 cannot equal 0, which means b could not equal 8. What is going to be my least common denominator? How can I get rid of these fractions? Well, I need a b minus 6. I need 2, the number 2. I also need b minus 8. So my least common denominator will be 2 times b minus 6 times b minus 8. So we need to multiply each term by this least common denominator in order to get rid of these fractions. So I will multiply each term by the least common denominator. Now let's do some canceling. The b minus 6 will cancel with this b minus 6. On this left side, that is a 14 there, I have 2 times 14. That will be 28 times b minus 8. I will do distributive property in just a bit. First term on the right side, the 2's will completely cancel out. And I'll have 1 times b minus 6 times b minus 8. Plus the last term, the b minus 8 will cancel with the other b minus 8. I will have 6 times 2 times b minus 6. So that will be 12 times b minus 6. So I will have 28b minus 224. I did distributive property over there. Oh, look here. We are going to have FOIL. b minus 6 times b minus 8. That's a binomial times a binomial. First term will be b squared. Outer is a negative 8b. Inner is a negative 6 b, that would be a negative 14b, and the last term is a negative 6 times a negative 8 is a positive 48. And then I have distributive property here, 12 times b is 12b, and 12 times a negative 6 is a negative 72. Now let's combine our like terms. On the right side, I have b squared, but I notice I have a negative 14b and a positive 12b, that would be a negative 2b. And I also have a positive 48 and a negative 72, and that would be a negative 24. Now, this one's a little bit different from the first two. This is quadratic. This is not a linear equation. I see my b squared. I need to get everything on one side. I'm going to get everything to the right because my b squared is positive over there. So I will subtract 28b from both sides. I will also add 224. So on the left side, yes, everything canceled out. It is 0. On the right side, I have b squared minus 30b. 
And a negative 24 and a positive 224 is a positive 200. So, we have a few choices here. You can use the quadratic formula, or you could factor this. I'm going to factor this. Remember, I have videos on this if you need more help with this factoring or the quadratic formula. But b squared, I'll have b times b. And to get a positive 200, I'm going to have two positives or two negatives. In this case, since I want my middle term to be negative, I will use two negatives. To get 200, I'm going to use 20 times 10. And now I will use the zero product property. b minus 20 will equal zero, which means one answer will be 20. We need to check these, though. Or b minus 10 is going to equal zero, which means b will equal 10. Now, earlier we had said that b could not equal 6 or it could not equal 8. So the solution set here is 10 and 20. This is my solution set. And I should probably check that if I want to make sure I'm 100% correct.